This is a subpoena to a witness, which means that tomorrow I have to go to court. Twice. You are probably wondering what I witnessed and why I have to go to court for it. So today, guys, we're doing story time. So for those of you who don't know, I am a landlord. I, uh, I live here, but I also have another house that I rent. Renting's not fun, okay? Being a landlord is not fun. It's not fun having someone else live in your house. Sure, they pay you money, which is great, but other than that, it's crap. You can't have a good experience as a landlord, obviously, but you have to have good people renting from you, or it's not gonna go so well. And I made the mistake of renting to one man who was not a good dude. So I met with the guy, he seemed nice, he wanted to rent my basement apartment, it had been vacant for like four months, so I was like, yeah, please, mortgages don't pay for themselves, let's get you in there. We signed the papers, he got into the apartment, and everything was good for like three days. Shortly after this guy moves in, I get a call from him, and he's complaining because the neighbors apparently threatened him. That doesn't sound very good, man. The neighbors should not be threatening you. And he was all like, yo, the neighbors, they didn't give me a chance to explain my side of the story. <laughs> I talked to the neighbors. Turns out this guy was out at 1 a.m. screaming his head off on the phone with his girlfriend or his ex-girlfriend or something. Woke the neighbors up and the neighbors came out and got angry because who wouldn't be angry if someone is out screaming their head off at 1 a.m.? Nobody should do that. People try to sleep. That's what they do. The neighbors told me one of the things he did when he got angry was rip the mailbox off my house. Now, when I got there, there was a mailbox. It was there. It didn't look like anything happened to it. I guess he put it back on the house. But that's a little bit of a red flag. You know, like, I, maybe this guy's not good. So judging from the fact that this guy was A, screaming his head off, and B, ripping the mailbox off my house, I assumed he must have a little bit of an anger issue. I just told him, I was like, you know, can you not... Can you not? So a few weeks go by without issue, great. Meanwhile, I'm trying to get someone to rent my upstairs apartment because you know there's a basement apartment and an upstairs apartment and then there's locked doors in between so you can't go into each other's apartments, you know? Good stuff. So I, uh, I had someone over to look at the apartment one day and I realized that one of the chairs in the upstairs apartment was missing. How does a chair go missing? It's a pretty big, big old chair like that. We paid like, I think almost like 800 bucks for it. It's a pretty expensive chair. So I was kind of concerned that it just disappeared. So I asked the guy, I'm like, hey dude, did you happen to see this chair? Did you do something? Did you move it? What's going on? You shouldn't even be able to get up in that apartment. And he was like, no, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't up there. Okay, where the hell is my chair then? In a lot of places, the most popular site for uh, posting classified ads is Craigslist. Well, we don't use Craigslist in Newfoundland. We have NL Classifieds and we have Kijiji.ca. That's where you go if you want to sell your stuff. Well, my wife just happened to be browsing Kijiji, just having a look around. What the hell? Our chair is on Kijiji. How does our chair end up on a classified website? It's supposed to be in the house. It disappeared. Things are starting to get a little bit weird now, aren't they? That's not even the half of it. So when you post an ad, you make an account, right? And, 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 and in any other ads you post, they also show on your account. Guess what happened when we clicked on his account name? Guess what happened when we did that? There was more stuff! He had stolen more stuff! There was a chair. There was a PlayStation 3. There was a TV. There was an air conditioning unit. And there were two unicycles! My Unicycles! And all the other crap was mine too, but the unicycles! He sold them on me! I went through the whole process of reporting the crime. You know, things were stolen, now they're being sold online. What is going on? I did all the stuff, I filled out all the paperwork, and uh, after a while the cops came back and said, We can't do anything! The dude's name was on the ad! Call blank at this number! His number, I got his number because I'm his freaking landlord. And the cops, they were like, well, anybody could have made that account, technically. You know, I get it. I get it. You know, you don't want to end up having someone get framed or whatever. But the only person with access to the stuff that was stolen was that guy. And they were like, mm, we can't do anything about it. The only way we'd be able to do anything about it is if you actually got him to admit to selling it. Well... My wife and I sat down on the couch. I took out my phone to start recording. She took out her phone and she called him. We said, hey, 
is this blank? And he was like, yeah, it is. And we were like, okay, cool. We were wondering if we could purchase this chair you have for sale. And he was like, nope, sorry, I already sold it. Done. Easy as that. Incriminating evidence. So we sent the evidence to the cops and then we were like, hmm, wouldn't it be great if this guy wasn't renting from us anymore? Duh. As I said, there are reasons that you can use to evict someone without having to wait 90 days to do it as a landlord. And I felt like I had a pretty good reason. So I cited the appropriate section of the code. I brought the, you know, the, the eviction notice to his house, put it in his mailbox, let him know it was there. The dude calls me and says, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> what? I just gave you your eviction notice. This is how it works. You're supposed to leave. You don't just, you don't just stay at a place once you're evicted. He does. He told me he was gonna stay for the whole next month even though he was supposed to be out before the start of the month. So I did the only thing I could do and I went to the people who wrote the laws, you know, that section of the government. I went there and I was like, hey, here's my situation. This guy's stealing from me and I've already given him his notice appropriately and he says he's not gonna leave. And the lady was like, hmm, well, it's gonna be about three weeks before you can get a hearing. Then once you have your hearing, it's gonna be a couple of weeks before they can start evicting him. Then they gotta give him like a one week notice thing before they can actually physically remove him. And I was like, that is six weeks. The dude said he's gonna be out at the end of the month. The end of August, this is stupid. So I now have people living in the upstairs apartment and the basement apartment. And one day at like four o'clock, I get a call from these guys and they say, hey, we just saw you know who take a bunch of tires, you know, like your summer tires and your winter tires. I have my winter tires in the shed in the back. They said he took tires, he put it in a taxi with his buddy and they drove off somewhere. And they went and they checked to see if the tires were in the shed. And of course they weren't because those were my tires. I'm still waiting on the cops to charge this guy with theft. I can't get this guy out of my apartment. And here he is still stealing from me. Luckily, this time we've got witnesses. So I call the cops. They go over there. I go over there. This guy comes home. He gets charged with theft. And he agrees to take his stuff out of the apartment and never come back. And I wish that was the end of the story. I really do. So I go into the apartment and I can't find the microwave. What the hell happened to that? What I did find on top of the fridge was a half eaten pizza pocket. I found the microwave in the backyard and guess what? It had been beaten to pieces with a baseball bat. Who does that? Who does that to a poor defenseless microwave? What did that microwave ever do to you? What did you put a pizza pocket in there, take it out, take a bite and realize it was cold in the middle so you just beat it up? You are a moron. Anyway, that's, that's the end of the story.